the delay, uh, I had to organize some uh, election of class representatives from, from the master class, since I'm the coordinator for, for that study. And uh, today we will continue looking at the different techniques for forecasting. Uh, remember assignment number one, it was presented last week and delivery will be one week from now. And now some of you at least have started and that's good. Uh, this uh, assignment is uh, well, probably not too much work, but it's quite central in case of uh, understanding first the uh, technique of mathematical induction and then simple uh, forecasting techniques when you have uh, a trend uh, or an increasing or eventually a decreasing uh, development of, uh, uh, of the demand. Uh, you need to pass this uh, assignment, number one, to complete this course. Um, okay. And on the other two assignments, which, which will be uh, given later, then the, uh, the result will also affect uh, the final grade. So this first assignment is uh, only a pass or fail assignment, but uh, assignment two and three will each constitute of 10% of the, the final grade in the course. So. Let's uh, do a short repetition of what we have done so far in the forecasting uh, field because we have looked at different types of, uh, uh, of development of the demand and we can see some examples here. The first one, you can see there is no pattern here. It is well, decreasing a bit and increasing and it is going a bit up and down from one period to, to the next one. So here it's very difficult to see if there is any pattern or development. And the way to forecast when the demand behaves like this is to try to find the, the average value and assume that we will have the, the average value for, for the, uh, the coming periods. Uh, the next example here, which we also started looking at, uh, at techniques with the regression analysis, is when you have a linear trend. It's not a straight line. It is uh, still some variation, but the variation here is going from this trend line instead of a variation among a straight line as we had in the first example here. So here we can find, by different techniques, find the formula for this line, which best fits to the given historical data. And to make a forecast when the demand behaves like this, we just have to prolong the line from the future time period, uh, until the, to the future time periods. Uh, the third example here, we'll not talk too much about that. We don't have any particular uh, models for, for this case, but sometimes you can also experience that you will have very high increase for a short period in, in, in the demand, and then you might have a, either a quadratic or exponential development here. So you start with a well, quite small demand and then suddenly it some more like uh, explodes and you will have a very high uh, interest for your particular product. But this will of course only continue for a short period because this cannot continue forever because it will raise quite high. But one, the next example here is uh, uh, also something we will look at models for. Here we still have a trend line. We can see that here the demand uh, will increase in this particular case, uh, but also you will have seasonal patterns. So you will have seasonal pattern patterns looking like this. This seasons will have high demand, but this seasons will have low demand. And the seasonal um, pattern will then go around the trend line, which might be increasing or eventually uh, decreasing. For first, the first example with the stationary series. We had uh, two uh, different uh, models we, we looked at. One was the moving averages, where in words here, you can try to find the arithmetic average on the n most recent observations. So you look at the observation for a certain number of time periods in the history and then take the average, divide by 
the number of time periods. And this is a decision, how many time periods should you include in this moving averages. We looked at example where it, uh, we used three time periods, and we also saw some example where you used six time periods. Uh, and if you have a trend, for example, if you were not aware of it, but you have a trend, this moving averages method will always find the trend uh, later. It, it will always be behind the trend. And the larger value of n, the more behind the trend this method will, will be. It's not able to, uh, to explore or, or find any, uh, any pattern in the, uh, in the data because each of these values will count equally. The oldest demand and the newest demand will have the same weight when you're calculating the average. We also looked at one other technique called the exponential smoothing, where you actually calculate a new forecast, where each time you get a new data point, you get the exact demand for one period, you will update the forecast and calculate the new forecast as this alpha value with the parameter, which is uh, called the smoothing constant. Uh, it has to be between 0 and 1. Usually it uh, is around 10-20% around that uh, value. Uh, there is no, not an exact value which is uh, the correct because this can vary in different situations what fits best to your particular market uh, or your product. But here you use the smoothing constant and multiply by the most recent observation and then you take 1 minus the smoothing constant. If this is 0 0.1, then this will be 0 0.9 and multiply by the last forecast. So the smoothing constant will be some kind of uh, balance between the, the recent observation and the previous forecast. And will update uh, for every new uh, time period when you get new data. Another way to write this is that the new forecast is equal to the last forecast minus the alpha, the smoothing constant, multiplied by the last forecast error. How much difference from was the forecast from the actual demand in, in the last period. These formulas are identical, it's just rearranging the, the factors in, in the formula. Uh, yeah, also here the alpha, the smoothing constant, has to be between 0 and 1, and usually it is around 10, 20 percent. And then we continued looking at models for trend-based uh, uh, demand. And here we have this uh, model, uh, regression model, which is used when you have a trend in the data set where you are expecting or can see for the, uh, for the previous uh, uh, the history of the data that you have a trend, either an increasing trend or a decreasing trend, and you want to find a line which best fits and best can describe this trend in the data. And you know that the straight line will have the formula that the demand or the y value in the coordinate system should be equal to a constant plus another constant, which is the, the gradient, multiplied by t, the time period. So here you have, uh, you have a, you have historical data which looks like this, and you can see that you have a increasing line here. So the a value in this formula will be where this line uh, crosses the y-axis or the demand axis. This is the axis for the demand and now this is the time axis. So by putting the value of t, which is one particular time period around this uh, axis, uh, when you have the a and the b value in the formula here, it is very easy to calculate and find the corresponding demand here. <coughs> so A, as mentioned, A will be the 
point where the line crosses the y axis and b will be how much this line is increasing or the change of value from one period to the next period for this line also called the slope or the gradient so this will now be the b value in this formula and to calculate these values we used these two parameters the sxx and the sxy shown here as i showed an example last time so i will not go into the details again uh, but when you have calculated these values you can easily find b as the sxy divided by the sxx and a will now be the average value of d which always will be the average the midpoint of the line here and you go uh, in the direction towards the uh, demand uh, axis uh, and you go by b multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2 and then you will reach this particular po point a so with these values a and b calculated this way you can provide the best fit of the data in a least squares sense this is the best the line that that best fits to the actual data point and to make a forecast you just continue the line here so if you're going into time period number 10 just put 10 into this formula here for t and multiply by the gradient the b value and add a and you will find the corresponding value for for this line which also can be seen as the the forecast for period number 10. So this was one method to use when you have a trend present. We started also, or at least I started to explain about another method called the double exponential smoothing, uh, where you have one particular method, Holtz method, as an example of this technique. Uh, and this can also be used in forecast when you have a linear trend in the data. And in the same situation like we saw with the regression analysis and this method will require a separate uh, well separate smoothing constant for the slope and for the intercept so you will actually have a line like this and the intercept is the end point of the line and what is very important to know which many students uh, misunderstand this is not the same as the last demand the last demand can be up here but the s value or the intercept will be the end point of the line that best fits to the data in the historical uh, data set and then the slope or the gradient will be identical to the b in in the formula formed by the, the regression but what is uh, uh, what what is uh, special or different with the, the uh, holtz method compared to the re regression analysis is that you will update this method every time and by adding one more data point instead of calculating the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, formula and the, uh, the the formula for for the lines all over again as you has have to do with the with regression analysis so uh, we looked at the formulas and uh, for the smoothing constant we talked about we have an alpha and one beta and alpha is similar to the smoothing constant for the single exponential smoothing method uh, it uh, means that uh, this is the weight of the law uh, of the latest demand compared to the latest forecast while the beta will indicate the weight of the latest value of the slope or the gradient uh, compared to the, the previous value so we have two formulas to update when you get a new data point you get the data for the current month for example then you have two formulas to update this uh, values of s and 
then let's call that G, which is similar to the B, the slope or the gradient of, of the line. So alpha will uh, be the value of the, uh, well, uh, the intercept, the smoothing constant, f which uh, describes the intercept or the, the S value. And uh, the beta will be the uh, weight of the latest uh, gradient. So let's now just write the two formulas for updating the S value, the end point of the line. Now what is happening is that you get another data point. You have current values of S and G and you get a new data point. So the new data point might be up here, much higher in this case than what we actually have estimated according to the forecast. And this means that the, the, the intercept will increase more than we have had estimated according to the, the last model. Uh, also, the G value will increase since this new measure will move this line upwards. So what will happen here is that you will get something like this. You have a higher increase here and you end up at this point. So this will now be the new S value while this here is the new D value, the new demand. Very important to know the difference of the S and the D. The D is the actual demand and S is the calculated demand as the end point of the line shown here. And also the G value will then be higher because the G value used to be or was calculated to be this one but now it will be higher, will be the difference from the latest and the newest data point. So formulas look like this. S of T will be equal to, when you have a new data point, the alpha value, usually 0 0.1, 0 0.2, multiplied by the latest demand, plus 1 minus alpha, and with, if this is 0 0.1, this will be 0 0.9 of course, uh, and multiplied by the latest, the, the sum of the latest series plus the latest gradient. But also the latest series was this one, the latest gradient was actually this one, what you expected, how much you expected the line to increase. So this is also similar to the latest forecast. Forecast for period T. Because the forecast in the previous period was found by adding the gradient to the series value, the end point of, of the line. So this is also a similar way to, to write this uh, formula. Uh, and we have uh, another formula for updating the G, the gradient value, then the G of T will use the beta smoothing constant multiplied by the difference between the current and the previous series value, S of T, this one minus the previous one, this one. So this is now the current or the increase of the series from the previous to the current uh, time period, multiplied by the beta value, which also is uh, usually 0 0.1, 0 0.2 in, in that area. Uh, and this will, then we need to add one minus beta and multiplied by the previous value of of G, G of T minus one. 
in both these cases we have smoothing constants that will uh, uh, well give the weight or the importance of the previous value acco uh, uh, according to the newest the values found by the newest uh, uh, data point or the newest demand and when we have this two uh, two formulas it is pretty easy to make a new forecast because the forecast for a new period from a, uh, the current period let's now assume that we are in period T and we want to make a forecast either for the next period or for a number of periods in advance so let's denote that as uh, T plus the value of tau which is an integral number one two three four five or whatever so we are now in period number t and we want to make a forecast for period t plus the tau value and if you want to make a forecast for the next period then tau is equal to one and this will be as we actually saw here equal to the previous value of the t plus the previous value of the of the s plus the previous value of the, the g and now we are in t plus tau that means that we can use the t values as the current values then we have s of t plus tau multiplied by g of t so this is now the formula for making a forecast for a certain number of periods in advance from period the current period which is now denoted as period number t uh, so let's now look at one particular example shown in the textbook in page number 77 and here we have uh, an example on uh, uh, example number 25 where we should now use this HALTS method uh, to make a one step ahead forecast for the aircraft engine failure data and are, we are given the data points in this example we need to we need estimates to get started and let's now say that the S value is said to be 200 and the G value is said to be 10 this is the the estimates to get uh, this method uh, started and also we have values given values uh, to to determine the correct values uh, you need to well analyze old data find out what fi fits best to your particular uh, uh, market or, or product and let's now assume that we have found out that the alpha and the beta value equal to 10 percent 0.1 is the, the value which best fits to to our um, to this particular example alpha and beta is equal to 0.1 so now we have values here to get started we have a start value for s let's now assume that we, we are in period zero in this case this is now period zero the current time period and we want to use Holt's method include one data point at a time and update the values for the series and the gradient so let's make a small table first we can use this one for calculations so let's now start here so well, let's see we want uh, we need a t value which starts on zero uh, and we will have the d of t the demand in period number t and similar we have the s value and the G value and at last the f, f value the forecast and the forecast will be equal to the previous s value plus the previous G value 
like this. Okay, we know the S and the G value for period zero. We don't care about the demand because the, this is now the current values where we want to, to start from. And we don't care about the forecast for period zero, but we can now easily make a forecast for period number one because the forecast for period number one will be 200 plus 10. Quite easy. Current value of the series plus the current value of the gradient, the slope of the line for one new time period. So now we want to update this method and let's now assume that in period number one we have a demand of 200. It was not 210 as forecasted so now in this case we will have a value which is lower than the line, uh, lower than the, the trend, trend line and that means that we have to adjust the values downwards because it will not increase as much as we had thought in the previous period. So then we want to update the S value according to the new value of D. So S of 1 will be 0 0.1, the alpha value, multiplied by 200 plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous forecast, as shown here, 210. And this will be equal to 209. So the new value of the series is 209. We didn't increase as much as we thought. We didn't reach the forecast of 210, but we had actually 209, which is the new value of the series. If this alpha smoothing constant was larger, then we probably would have an even smaller value, because then the, the new demand of 200 would be given a higher weight than the previous forecast of 210. But now, using 0 0.1, we end up with 209 as the value of the series. And then we can also update the g value because the g of 1 will be the beta constant, which also is 0 0.1, multiplied by the difference of the current value of s and the previous value of s. 209 minus 200. This value minus this value. And we have to add Again, 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous value of the gradient, which was 10. And that means that the new value of G, the new value of the gradient, will be 9.9. .9. And now we can easily make a new forecast for the next period, period number 2, which is 209 plus 9.9. .9. 218.9. If we had made a forecast in period 0 for period 2, then we had to use this formula, which was the value of S, which was 200, plus the tau value, and then, which if, if we were in period number 0 and wanted to make a forecast for period number 2, the tau value would be equal to 2 multiplied by the g of 10, which is 200 plus 20. And the previous forecast for period number 2 would have been 220. But we have had a new data point, which was lower than expected. And that means that we need to adjust the forecast downwards. So this way, for each new data point, use these formulas calculate new values of the series, the, the intercept of the line, and the gradient, the g value, and update these uh, parameters and find a new value for the forecast for the next period by just adding these two together. 
We can take one more before we take the, take the break. Because now we want forecast or, or we get a new data point for period number two and it turned out to be 250 which was a bit higher than the forecast. That means that now even if you have to adjust this line down, we have to now adjust it upwards again because now the new data point will affect the new values here. So, for period number two, the S value would be 0 0.1 as the alpha multiplied now with 250 plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous forecast which was 218.9 and this make a total of 222. So now the series value would be 222 which is adjusted with the new demand of 250. And similar, we update the value of the gradient as 0 0.1 multiplied by the difference of the two latest S values, 222 minus 209 plus 0 0.9 and multiplied by the latest G value of 9.9 plus there which means that we now end up with 10.2 as the gradient. The new demand of 250, first it increased the value of S, and then it also increased the gradient. So the line or the slope of the line would be steeper for the next period. And we can easily use this value to make a forecast for the next period. 222 plus 10 plus 10.2 is 232.2. Like this. Okay, let's take a break, continue in 15 minutes, and I will finalize this example and also show one more example on Holtz method.